Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One would assume that because the Stoics so value tranquility and untroubledness, apatheia and ataraxia, as ideals, as goals, that one of the things that they would be greatly in favor of is a peaceful life with as much leisure as possible. But as we're going to see, Epictetus thinks that those can lead us astray, that those are not really what we ought to be taking as goals. So he talks about this in uh, Book 4, Chapter 4 of the Discourses, and let's see what he actually has to say about this. He begins by saying that the desires for four main types of things place us in the power of other people. And he's not saying this exclusively. Of course, desires for other things place us in, in the power of other people. But these do as well. And this seems a little bit odd or counterintuitive at first. So the first one is peace, hesuchias. Um, you know, being in a condition where one is left alone, where one is not being disturbed by other people. Similar to that, uh, sole, uh, the word that we get school from, which gets translated as leisure. In, in ancient times, those who could afford to go to school were people who actually had some measure of leisure. They didn't have to work for a living, although Cleanthes provides us with an example of somebody who had a day job carrying water and then went and studied with Zeno, the first Stoic, at, at uh, uh, other times of the day and at night. <coughs> um, travel, apodemia, literally it's sort of uh, going away from your demos, going away from where you're from. And finally, interestingly enough, scholarship, philologia. Um, Epictetus will talk an awful lot about reading and about books. So doesn't this strike you as a bit strange to hear a Stoic philosopher whose, works, whose, whose words and ideas we're getting in these books, who spent a lot of time teaching his students, who references all these great works of Stoic literature that we no longer possess, telling us that these things can become a trap for our desires and actually make us unhappy. How is that the case? Well, um, he's going to tell us that with each of these, they can interfere with other things that we consider to be valuable. So here's, here's some uh, examples. He says, um, Remember, it's not merely a desire for office and wealth, which makes men abject and subservient to others, but desire for peace, leisure, travel, and scholarship. It makes no difference what the external object be. The value you set upon it makes you subservient to another. What difference does it make, then, for you to set your heart on the Senate, something that would take a lot of work, or on not being a senator, getting to take it easy? What difference does it make to desire to office or to desire not to hold office? What difference does it make to say, I am a bad, in a bad way, I have nothing to do, but I am tied to my books as though I were a corpse? That's what some scholars might be saying. Or, I am in a bad way, I have no leisure to read. Both of those are equally bad. If we're telling other people and telling ourselves, I don't, you know, I can't get away, I'm being constrained by this stuff. Um, it's, it's not, it's a sign that things have gone wrong. And he says, um, what purpose do you read for? Tell me, if you turn to reading merely for entertainment or in order to learn something, that's not really going to pay you off that much. Um, if you prefer reading to, if you refer reading to the proper standard, what else is this but a life of serenity? 
But does reading actually secure for you that life of serenity that you're after? He says, for most people, no. Now, he also points out uh, a really important uh, distinction. It's not just a lack of leisure. It's also leisure itself that lies outside of the proiracis, the faculty of choice, the, you know, the moral faculty, uh, what it is that we have control over and what we don't have control over. Now that sounds a little strange because can't we set up our day in such a way that we will in fact have some time of leisure or you know, can't we set things up so people won't be bothering us, you know, we take the phone off the hook, uh, we don't answer our texts, uh, you know, don't, don't look at your email or Facebook or anything like that. Uh, yeah, we can, in fact, do that, but that doesn't mean that we're not necessarily going to get bothered by something else. And he's got some great examples here. He says, um, what is this, this activity um, that you're doing that it, it makes you so vulnerable to any chance thing? Um, why do you get upset? You know, why are you sort of investing yourself in reading, if reading can be interrupted by all sorts of things, um, by a crow, by a crowd outside, by the light not working as well as, as you want. Um, he's really on to something there. If we desire for our, what we might say, our free time or our time devoted to what we think is, is valuable, uh, if we desire that too strongly, that's not something that we have control over, so we make ourselves vulnerable to being upset by it. If we're constantly working for that, if we set up the long-term end of, I just, you know, kind of keep work, work, working so I can finally deserve that vacation. When you get the vacation, it may not end up being as great as the sacrifice that you made in order to get there, and then what's going to happen? You will be disappointed. Vacations, by the way, often include, you know, being alone, being by yourself, not being bothered by people, having leisure time, perhaps even beach reading, right? People talk about that. But think about all the different things <clears throat> that Epictetus brings up that can easily go wrong. So we don't want to be any more attached to these things as we do to their opposites. We don't want to be any more attached to leisure as we are, uh, you know, we don't want to be any, any more attached to leisure as we are averse to the lack of leisure, you could say. He thinks that what we do, especially with respect to reading, and with respect to reading you know, Stoic philosophy, we lose sight of what the point of reading or study was. Now, of course, a lot of our reading is perhaps just for entertainment or to kill some time in the airport or, you know, to figure out um, how we're going to plan our next steps with our business or you know, any of those sorts of matters, right? But he, he does think that if we are devoting ourselves to learning philosophy, and of course that should be Stoic philosophy, then that should pay off in a certain way, right? How? Well, reading should be preparation, as he says, for the art of living. Not just technical expertise, but for thinking out how to manage our life well, how to live happily, which means fr uh, free of troubles, which means tranquilly, which means able to fulfill our duties to other people. So that's the point of reading the books. And he says that this is measured by something other than books. Books themselves cannot provide the standard for measuring whether we ought to be engaged in reading or not. Now, if we allow these sorts of things to become too important for us, we can you know, get quite upset. Epictetus says that we should be able to take things as they come. So whether we're on our own, being undisturbed, or in a crowd, whether we have leisure or whether we have the opposite of leisure, asolia, business time, getting things done time, we should take that and not approach it in a complaining, bitter, upset way, constantly bewailing what we're not getting, these things up here, when we don't really know what to do with them anyway. Instead, like he says, 
we should um, be willing to, to uh, you know, accept these sorts of things. He says, um, am I to pass my life in this turmoil? What do you mean by turmoil? Among many people, what is there hard about that? Imagine you are in Olympia. Regard the turmoil as a festival. This is how he suggests we look at these sort of matters. There too, one man shouts that and another this. One man does this and another that. One man jostles another. There's a crowd in the baths. And yet, who of us does not take delight in the Olympic festival and leave it with sorrow? Do not become peevish or fastidious towards events. Um, don't say, we, we shouldn't say, I don't like the, the vinegar because it's, it's, it's sour, the honey is rotten, it upsets me, I don't like vegetables. He gives these common sort of examples that fastidious eaters have, right? He says, in the same fashion, you say, I don't like leisure. It's a solitude. I don't like a crowd. It is turmoil. And so Epictetus is saying, well, what do you like? Why don't you figure that out so you can actually be happy? What that means is figuring out what in these things we really do desire and then removing our desire from all the other aspects of them. What is it in travel that we're really looking for? What is it in leisure that makes leisure uh, a good thing, so it seems to us? What is it that, that, that being by ourselves and being undisturbed by other people, why does that seem to be a good thing to us? Same thing with reading. Why does that appear to be a good thing? It's not that these things are good in and of themselves. It's really, for the Stoic, what we do with them. So that lies within the realm of our choice. That is about using things, the chresis, um, rather than desiring the thing itself. 